So I normally don't do an update on my state of the collection. However, this year there have been many changes to my collection. Lots of watches for sale and have been sold and some watches coming into the collection as well. I did an interview with Chrono24 where we went over some of the major watches in my collection. However, there were a bunch of watches that were sort of missed and not included in that video. So I wanted to do a really quick state of the collection so you could see the entire sort of core collection that I have currently. And then later on, I'll do some affordable watches as well. But stay tuned for that. That'll be later this year. Anyway, let's flip the camera and take a look at my state of the collection. So as I mentioned in the intro, there were a few watches that got skipped in that Chrono 24 video. There are actually a number of watches. I'm gonna start with those. So here's the first one. This is my AP Royal Oak Offshore Diver, a very big, very heavy watch on bracelet. Uh, I absolutely love this watch, but I do not wear it enough because I don't find it very comfortable. Sort of the same problem that I have with my Tudor P01. That's why I'm actually selling that watch. So let me throw this watch on wrist. I bought it a long time ago, discounted off of retail. Uh, however, these have gone up significantly and talking about watches that have gone up significantly since I bought them. This is the Mad One Red. Uh, obviously these are selling for like $15,000 uh, at different outlets. You know, watch box is selling a few of them for $15,000. This is a watch that was actually delivered after that video. So obviously not featured in that video. This is made out of aluminum. It's very thick, but uh, it does get a Miyota 8 series, which is kind of crazy considering the price. It is $2,900, but the price that people are paying for these is even crazier at that $15,000 range. This is a watch that is made by Max Buser uh, in the Mad Studios, so Mad Galleries. Uh, it is made by MBNF, so that's the reason why it is expensive. Uh, very desirable watch, I guess, because it is a pretty awesome watch. Uh, very weird. Not a lot of people like it. A lot of people do. I am one of the people, obviously, who do. Uh, and you tell the watch the time, excuse me, from the side right there. So let me throw the uh, AP Royal Oak on my seven and a half inch wrist. So you can see what I am talking about. I think these are going for like astronomical amounts of money. It looks good on wrist, but it is not comfortable. I love that it tapers. I love the taper on the bracelet. They did a good job with that. There you go. This video is brought to you by whatnot.com. Whatnot.com are a community marketplace for collectors like me and you. Whatnot uses a live stream format where you can actually buy and sell watches during a live stream. They have auction functionality, buy now functionality, and giveaway functionality. In fact, that's where I'll be doing most of my giveaways going forward to help avoid scammers. Not only that, I'll be selling all of my watches going forward on whatnot because i really love the format i love the community aspect of it i get to talk to the people who want to buy my watches and they get to talk to me about the watches themselves there's no better way of buying and selling watches so come and join me on whatnot download the app using the link in the description down below and get ten dollars towards your first purchase i'll see you in my next live stream another watch that was not featured on that video is this, my Grand Seiko Chronograph, a really weird watch, very quirky watch. I absolutely love it. It's got uh, a power reserve. It has a chronograph function. Some of these actually also have a GMT. This one does not. Uh, sapphire bezel. You can see the spring drive movement from the back. It's one of the more complicated spring drive movements that you could buy. Uh, this is a larger watch. It's on the uh, 43 millimeter side, so it's not small. Uh, these don't wear small, but what a beautiful watch. I love this watch. I really do think it's crazy uh, and I enjoy it. So uh, next watch that was not featured on that video. Here we have a watch that I actually did talk about during that video and I think they actually cut it out for one reason or another, but this is a Speedmaster. This is one that I bought at a garage sale. Maybe that's the reason why it was cut out, but uh, <laughs> I paid like $650 for it. Pretty cool. Uh, and I put a clear case back on it so you could see the movement. Um, this is just a vintage watch. I paid next to nothing for it. I did have to have it serviced. 
uh, and the service did cost as much as the watch, actually more than the watch. And it's on an aftermarket bracelet, but it looks so cool. It really is. It makes it a little bit thicker because of that case back, but uh, all in all, just a really cool watch. Speaking of cool watches, I have a watch that is from a friend, and this is uh, a friend who is a watchmaker. This is Reuter Watches. He is literally blowing up. People are ordering watches from him left and right. There is a wait list for his watches now. Um, I'd like to take part of the credit for that, but there really isn't, uh, the credit doesn't really lie with me. He partnered up with Tim Masso, and Tim Masso uh, basically helped him with uh, getting his name out there, and a lot of people are now ordering watches from him. Uh, he does amazing work. You know, it's all about the Valju 7750 in here, and it is basically a hand finished movement. Takes it apart, puts it back together. Beautiful. And this is a Panda chronograph. Uh, and it's also customizable. There's a whole bunch of things that you can customize with it. I don't have it fitted because I just recently changed the strap, but there you go on my seven and a half inch wrist. Just a beautiful watch. And I chose all the colors. I chose the uh, dial, I chose the background for the date, I chose the second hand color, everything. Man, they are cool. Definitely check them out if you are interested in a custom, really a custom watch. Here we have one of the more interesting watches in my collection. Uh, this is sort of in the same vein as the Mad One. It's a Romain Jerome that is made by the same team that made the Mad One. So that is Eric Giraud, and then Ingenieur. Ingenieur are a brand who, or a manufacturer really, who make movements, and they've made some pretty incredible movements for some incredible watches. Um, and this is one of them. This is actually based on a Eta movement. However, they make this incredible module that the Eta movement actually sits in. It's a linear retrograde jump hour. So all three of those things packed into one watch. Again, not the most practical watch. You could see a theme through my collection, but um, you know, you tell the hour in the front, the minute on the top. It's in titanium. Uh, you know, pretty awesome. It's almost like having an MBNF at you know uh, pennies on the dollar compared to an MBNF. This cost fifty five hundred dollars somewhere around there. Uh, originally, it was twenty six thousand dollars, but obviously, they weren't selling for that price. So. Here you go. I don't really like Romain Jerome, but I do like this watch. Uh, a few other watches that were not featured in that video, it's my Panerai. So I'm gonna show you all three at once. This is my current collection of Panerai. I have three Panerai. Um, I have a fourth, but my wife wears it. So there you go. Uh, this is a titanium Panerai. This is my Carbotech, and this is my Ceramica Flyback Chronograph. Uh, I'm not going to throw all three on my wrist, but um, these are watches that have been getting less wrist time, unfortunately, because they are bigger and I have been moving to smaller watches. And unfortunately, these have gotten less wrist time. That doesn't mean I don't like them anymore because I do. Um, I just want to start wearing them a little bit more here and there, and I will hopefully start wearing them more. But really cool watches. I love the history behind Panerai. Here is uh, another purchase from this year, another watch that was not featured in Chrono 24. This is a Mont Blanc. It is a GMT with a salmon dial. It's a salmon copper dial. I absolutely fell in love with this watch and my wife bought it for me for Christmas. And there you go. Uh, this did not make it into my state of the collection last year because I did not have it yet, but seven and a half interest. These actually have sold out. So if you want one of them, they're pretty hard to get, I think pretty hard to get, but uh, another watch not featured on that video. And it goes under the radar when we're talking about collecting, I think. Uh, this is a Gerald Genta design watch that people don't really um, talk about. And it is of course the Ingenieur from IWC. This is the Mission Earth, I believe it's called. And it is a large, it's 46 millimeters. You can see on my wrist, it looks big. That's because it is big, but it's a cool watch. And uh, again, I don't wear this as often as I probably should because I'm kind of out of the large watch phase, but uh, you'll see a pattern. A lot of my newer watches are smaller. Uh, this is 
obviously on the large side. I think Mad One is probably the biggest watch that I bought recently. Uh, there's my Vacheron. So uh, this is the Key Delete. Beautiful watch. I recently did a video about these, so I'll put a link to those uh, up above if you want to see that. It's the three watch collection that I have from Vacheron. I have the World Timer. This is the Traditional in rose gold. Fully rose gold watch, rose gold dial, rotor, case, crown, spring bars, buckle. Everything is rose gold. Then you have the Kedalee. This is in titanium. Just a beautiful, weird watch with a sapphire dial. Tons of little details on this watch that a lot of people will never see unless they look really closely to it. That transparent dial, you can see the movement below. Uh, interesting date wheel. All of them have display case back. So uh, basically the same movement in all three are almost the same movement. Uh, but I will show you on my world timer uh, overseas, which has absolutely skyrocketed in price. Uh, the last I saw a sale on this one, it was around $60,000, which makes absolutely no sense. But people are going nuts. Uh, hopefully the price has come down on these soon. I mean, I would never sell this anyway, so it makes no difference to me uh, what the prices go to because I wouldn't be able to replace it if I sold it. So that's the reason why I will never sell it. That's the way I think of things. Maybe I'm thinking wrong, but uh, I think I did a three watch collection for Roger Dubuis, but if I didn't, I will do that soon. Uh, I have to double check if I did that, but this is my three watch collection for Roger Dubuis, which is about to become a two watch collection because I have sold this watch right here. Um, and it is leaving my collection, unfortunately. Uh, again, bigger watch, not wearing it, decided to sell it. This is the Easy Diver Black Swan limited edition of 88 pieces. Uh, it has the uh, Ponce de Geneve, the seal of Geneva on it, on the case, on the movement, all in house. It's a really hot horology. This is high-end watchmaking. Uh, that you can get for a pretty good price. And I'm keeping these two. Uh, one of them might go, I'm not sure yet, but I'll tell you which one is never leaving. It's this one. This one was actually featured in that video for Chrono 24. It's just a gorgeous watch, rose gold. This is the Monagasque. This is the homage. This is the homage to Patek Philippe. This is what uh, the homage was meant to be. And it's sort of uh, a very quirky watch from Roger Dubuis. Roger Dubuis worked at Patek Philippe and he made some pretty amazing watches. He was head of high complications. Uh, and when he moved to make his own brand, Roger Dubuis, he sort of wanted to make something that was on par with Patek Philippe, but more avant-garde. So you can see that he definitely achieved that. These are some crazy, funky watches. Uh, the Monagas that I have here, uh, one of my favorite watches in the collection, inspired by a roulette wheel. Of course, Monagas means uh, the people of the Principality of Monaco. So, of course, you might have known that, but uh, some people do not. So it's a very weird uh, watch. It's sort of inspired by Monaco. Obviously, the roulette wheel, and that's what they were going for. Awesome watch. Just a really cool watch that, uh, you know, I'm always excited about it. But talking about cool watches, this is a really great vintage watch that, again, will never leave my collection. This is the Bulova Chronograph D. I'll wind this up a little bit. Uh, it has a Valjoux movement inside, hand-wound Valjoux. I think it's a Valjoux 7733. Don't quote me on that, I don't remember. Beautiful orange chronograph hand, uh, and then a sub chronograph hand here on the, uh, the sub-dial there in orange as well. Just a really cool 70s diver. I think I paid like $450 for this. It works perfectly. Uh, it's like 38 or 39 millimeters. It really is pretty awesome. This is a watch that was not featured on that original video and that uh, the Chrono 24 video. And that is a shame because this is a really cool watch with a little globe inside. Unfortunately, this was left behind. I meant to bring this for that video and I forgot to bring it grade five titanium globe inside there. So it's a little miniature globe. You have platinum and you have white gold on the dial and on the uh, bowl that is the date window. Not sure why they use that there, but it is pretty cool. Beautiful watch with some incredible details. And you could see that little globe through a second sapphire crystal case back. So you, well, it's not a second case back, but you have a sapphire crystal here and then you have a little sapphire crystal here 
displaying that globe. And there's a bowl in there with a hand painted, beautiful hand painted um, uh, uh, night sky. Beautiful, just really an awesome watch. This is a watch that a lot of people actually complained about from that video because they did not do a close up of it. And of course I'll throw one up, but this is a seafarer from Abercrombie & Fitch. These are very sought after. It's a watch that I do not wear very often. It is a family heirloom um, and it's pretty awesome. Uh, this was developed by Jack Hoyer himself with a professor that he knew from college. Um, and there you go. I mean, it's just awesome that this even exists, that Abercrombie & Fitch back in the day was really for adventurers, people who wanted to get outfitted for an adventure like Amelia Earhart or Teddy Roosevelt, someone like that would actually go there to buy a hot air balloon or something like that and to watch. And this has a tide indicator. It was for fishermen or people who were concerned about the tides, I guess. But uh, unfortunately, they did not do a good job of displaying it on that video, I, I have to say. But, you know, there was a lot going on and, I, you know, things happen. This is my Waltham Bathyscaphe. This is a watch that I did buy this year as well or late last year. I don't remember if it actually made my uh, video where I did my state of the collection last year. But here it is. Uh, and you can see my collection is constantly changing. We still have new watches to go through here. So uh, everything changes on a regular basis. And uh, this is you know, a new edition, as I mentioned, 37 millimeters, over 37 millimeters. This is uh, a watch that was made by Blancpain. It is a 50 fathoms. It is a Bathyscaphe. So they're sort of civilian version of the 50 fathoms or uh, skin diver version and uh, they made these for Waltham, U.S. brand. However, this, I believe, was after they became a Swiss brand because they became a Swiss brand later on, and that's when they made these for Waltham. I believe that is the story, but this is a pretty cool watch with a Bakelite bezel. Bezel actually works. It is not locked or anything like that, so it's very smooth. Just a cool, cool watch. Really nice patina on the dial. I'm so proud to own this watch. I love it. I love that watch. Uh, my latest edition. This is my latest edition, although I am on the hunt for another watch already. This is my Cartier Santos. This is the ADLC version on bracelet and rubber strap. Um, I bought this watch not on a whim. I won't ever use that word when I'm spending that much money, but I did buy this watch without the intention to buy it. Uh, I didn't go there and, and I think I was going to be buying it, but I ended up buying it and I'm not disappointed that I did. It is a very comfortable, beautiful watch and it's really great for the person who wants like an everywhere, go everywhere, do everything watch because you have 100 meters of water resistance. You get the straps, uh, the extra strap, the extra rubber strap. There's a lot you can do with this watch. Uh, I did sell a watch this year. One of the watches that I did sell uh, was my Planet Ocean. This was the replacement for the Planet Ocean. This is the 1957 Trilogy Edition of the Seamaster 300, and it is meant to look exactly like the original Seamaster 300, and that is the reasons why I bought it. These were limited edition to like 3,000 watches, but considering that it is an Omega, that is actually not that many. Uh, and they did sell out of these. They also made a ultra limited edition, which was a limited edition of 357 or something like that. Uh, and that was a set. So you got all three trilogy watches. So the Railmaster, the Speedmaster and the Seamaster. This is the Seamaster. You have a bi-directional bezel on here, which is true to the original. You get a Sapphire crystal, but you do get that vintage Omega logo. You get quick release on here as well. The quick adjustment. I have to remove that little red tape there. I never removed it, but there you go. Really good looking watch. I love it. I really do think that's such a cool watch. Uh, speaking of weird, cool watches, this is a watch that I still have not sent for service, but this is my Ventura MGS. It is a automatic quartz watch. So this is a quartz display. Uh, right now it is not working, you can see, but uh, I do have to charge this up and you have to charge it up by moving it. It takes a long time. So I haven't worn it. I need to send this. I'm going to set the central watch here in New York City in Grand Central. That's where I usually send some of my watches for um, repair. 
This is made out of like tegmented steel basically. So it's hardened stainless steel. Interesting, interesting watch. This is a watch that was featured on that video with Chrono 24. Uh, we had actually a pretty good laugh about it, even uh, off camera because it was pretty funny. Um, okay, so we're getting down to the last four watches that I'm gonna show you guys today. This is another watch that I am selling. And the reason why I'm selling this is because, like I said about that first watch I showed you, the AP Royal Local Offshore, it is uncomfortable. Uh, this is my P01 from Tudor. I do find it to be pretty uncomfortable when I'm wearing it. And you can see the similarities in the way that these two watches or those two watches wear. The head of this watch is huge, the case. And the extra, you know, contraption between the lugs doesn't help. I put it on a bracelet, which sort of balanced it a little bit more. But even with that there, it still just doesn't wear comfortable. I notice that my you know wrist actually hurts when I'm wearing this. Maybe I'm just a very weak person, but <laughs> I don't know. I wear other big watches and I don't have that same problem uh, as I do with this watch or the Royal Oak. Same, same exact problem. In fact, this is another big watch that I, you know, I contemplate selling. It's a really cool watch. This is a Ralph Lauren. It is a 44 and a half millimeter watch, not a small watch. Sporting chronograph. It has an enamel white dial, black indices, black hands. So it's a black and white theme. You have these screws in the bezel. I believe those are not functional, but you do get a JLC movement in the back with a column wheel chronograph. So this is a high end, very high end movement in a Ralph Lauren watch. Ralph Lauren is a big fan of watches, big fan of watchmaking. He's a big fan of Cartier. Uh, he started his own brand, uh, Ralph Lauren watches, obviously. He teamed up with the best. He teamed up with Richemont and he got movements from Piaget, from JLC. He got cases from IWC. He got cases from Piaget and a few others. So essentially what he did was he just went to Richemont said, I want to start a brand and just went through their parts bin and built his own watches. And this is the result. I think it's a really good looking watch. I'm not a fan of this strap anymore that I have on it, but I just haven't gotten around to changing it. I will, but there you go. Beautiful, beautiful dial on here. Really um, just a stark white dial, matte white dial. And you have glossy black indices and hands. Really cool beautiful movement as well, really high end. Um, and it sucks that, you know, I don't know, these don't sell for very much. He didn't sell them for a lot to begin with. So uh, a watch with that same movement, that I think these were like $4,500 when they came out, the Ralph Lauren's. He actually was using a movement that's used in a watch like this, which is almost the exact same movement. This is a GMT version, but this was a watch that retailed for $16,000. That's a watch that retailed for $4,500. I mean, people see Ralph Lauren on the dial and they think it's cheap. That's enough about that watch. This is the JLC Navy Seals Diving GMT Chronograph. It is a master compressor extreme. So it's a thousand meter dive watch that is a chronograph. Um, it's just a big grade five titanium watch that is literally like a brick on your wrist. And you can see how it sits. It is almost 17 millimeters thick with the sapphire crystal. It's a dome sapphire crystal. You have, um, I think this is a ceramic bezel. One of the first ceramic bezels that I ever owned on a watch. Um, just an awesome watch. And I always say this is the watch that I would grab if there was some sort of zombie apocalypse because you could just take it off and beat a zombie over the head and you would survive. Or they wouldn't and you would walk away. Uh, last but not least, the most sentimental watch in my collection a watch that I just recently wore to a Zenith event and everybody there was pretty impressed with this watch because it is a really beautiful watch with a pearl dial. You have that gold accents in the sub seconds. You have applied indices that are sort of art deco. You have that trapezoid date window. It's an elite. So it's very, very thin, automatic, beautifully finished. I have this on an aftermarket strap, but you can see what I'm saying. It is a gorgeous watch. Uh, and I think a lot of people don't really appreciate them for one reason or another, uh, but they definitely are a beautiful, beautiful watch. And these go for, you know, they're heavily discounted these days. Um, this one's made out of rose gold, but there you go. That is the state of my collection right now. I actually did not bring any of my 
affordable watches to this video. I completely forgot. I thought I did, I did not. Uh, but I will do another video uh, with affordable watches later on in the year. Probably I will do that at the end of the year. I'll do both videos where I'm doing my affordable collection and my sort of core collection, not so affordable collection. Um, and that's really it. Anyway, guys, tell me what you guys think down in the comments below. I wanna hear from you guys. What do you think of my collection? I've made some changes and I continue to make some changes. By the end of this year, I am sure there will be some major changes in this collection as I keep on changing the way I am collecting. Um, but one thing remains, one theme remains. I buy what I like, I don't buy hype watches. And you could see that from my collection. Almost every single one of my watches I have bought uh, because I love them and that's it. Uh, if they became hyped later on, that is only because they became hyped later on. I did not buy them during the hype and I would not buy a watch that I would, you know, only buy because it was, you know, somebody else's hyped, you know, product. That's not my thing. So, uh, that's really it. Tell me what you guys think down in the comments below. Please also don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell icon. It is super helpful for the channel and I very much appreciate it. Please follow me on Instagram. My Instagram is watchchrisblog, all one word. I have some links in the description. Those links are to Amazon. If you click those links and buy anything, it helps support the channel. It doesn't cost you anything extra. However, I very much appreciate it. Anyway, thank you for logging on. I'll catch you guys in the next video.